Welcome back, Disc Golf fans, to the Round 2 Back 9 coverage of the Discraft Ledstone Open presented by Merrill, a Disc Golf Pro Tour Elite Series Plus event. We're out here for the Back 9 at Northwood Black. Some very difficult holes coming up, and I'm excited to watch them. I'm Nathan Queen, again joined by Andrew Fish. There's a very good possibility we're going to see excellent disc golf. There's also a very good possibility one or more of these holes is going to make a really good disc golfer look like a chump temporarily. Yeah, we, we have some snowman warnings uh, out here on hole 12, I believe. Cole Radalin starting off pretty well, three down through this front nine. And uh, all four of our players actually under par. Yeah, under par is good here. You see a little bit of movement there. Brody Smith jumping up with a five down on that front. Uh, but anything under par is keeping you in the mix. Hole 10, about as open as it's going to get. Wear your sunscreen for one hole only. 400 feet across a field. A couple options here. You can go forehand or backhand through the straight ahead gap. Or a cut roller is also a fairly common option. Yeah, although it is the most open hole on the course, still pretty tight off of the tee. Uh, where Cole is throwing right now has been a bit more tight in, in past years. Uh, the bushes were a lot closer and that wasn't open. Uh, he's gone roller down that left side and ended up pushing long actually. Uh, should still be in circle one though. This is the more traditional play. And the crosswind kind of hanging that out there. It does stay on cut. And Garrett's going to stop right inside the circle. Yeah, very well executed on the cut roller there. You see them in the background comparing their various tricks. Simon probably had too much cut on it, and it runs up a tree anyway, so he's in layup zone. Yeah, pretty common on this one. One of the longer playing 400 foot shots that you really have with this low ceiling that you have off the tee. Adam Ham is gonna go for the flex shot down the middle, I believe. It shapes pretty well for that forehand, the way these trees line up. Tough to get it to stand up and turn over enough to not do what he's done right here and drift off to the left without throwing something too understable and flipping over too much. Yeah, really have to Goldilocks your angle. Simon with the jump putt. And smartly not trying to absolutely pin this basket. It does kind of run away behind. As you see there, running away just a bit, but catching that leaning tree shouldn't be much issue for his par. Cole Rudd Allen trying to get to four under now. Another opportunity for Birdie. And one last chain on the right side. Cole to 14 under. Starting to make a pretty good push. Garrett Everson now. Also looking for a birdie. So put him two under par, keeping pace with Simon. And a good stroke. He's been a little up and down on that front. It gets the back off to the exactly the way you want it to be going. Yeah, and again, not many birdies on this hole for the field. Just 18%, 68% taking par. And a couple of par cleanups there. And that moves us into hole 11. A little bit shorter as far as distance goes, 380 feet, but much tighter. You've got these two trees here in the middle of the fairway that really test what you would like to do off of the tee pad. If you go straight down the gut, you're going to catch that first tree. So you have to decide whether you want to drift a little bit left and then fade back, or if you'd like to go with that right-handed backhand and go inside of those two trees and then fade slightly at the end. 
This again shapes pretty oh, well for a forehand. Yeah. Yeah. Cole is going to go right through one of those trees, it appears. Yeah, he's cut just in front of it. And uh, that's going to put you over a little bit too far right, but gets to about circle's edge down there. Should be a good putt. The other common play, the very flippy backhand. Yeah, you want this to drag to the inside of those two trees in the middle, but just a late release on that one and didn't have much of a chance. Nice of it to be in the fairway right now, though. Lazat once again with the forehand, really like this. Oh, Get in front of the back wall. And the ground scoops also inside the circle. That's the line right there. That's slow moving left the entire time. Just enough to let it finish at the end. Great shot there from Simon. Dude. And Hamas's forehand just not connecting today. Almost everything has been over hyzered. Garrett to the backhand approach. That's that last one. And once again, well measured with the putter approach. Yeah, hit the line that he needed to. Does end up a little bit shorter than you'd like for a par putt. So going to have a bit of a tester left. Adam, lots of work to do yeah. from where he's at. <laughs> Group likes it. And going again already, long circle two look to save the par, and there's a little bit of wind that creeps in right here, uh, kind of coming off of 10's fairway. There's a little cut going down to 12 as well, and may, might have caught some headwind right there. And Cole with the rare miss, air ball's right side. Yeah, uh, only a few places on all of Northwood Black are exposed for the most part the trees are a pretty solid windbreak carrot for his par and able to convert yeah nice scramble hitting very early off the tee but able to collect himself nicely Adam Hammes now needs to hit this tester for bogey Oh, and it's pushed out the right side. Pretty strong chains on that one. Yeah, I agree. Oh. We're looking at each other. Can't figure out what Simon is doing there. Yeah, it just kind of fell out of his hand. I'm we, not uh, really sure. We noted on the front that his putt looks different than it has in the past. Um, so maybe just an off day, but a uh, curious miss. Yeah, still under par at the moment. Old mm -hmm. card a little flummoxed by hole 11, and that's not really what you want to be feeling going into 12. 1,050 feet, a par 5. Gentle break to the right off the tee. You'd like to clear the creek, which is casual, on your second shot and get to this uh, flat spot or even up on the hill if you're attacking for birdie. Very, very difficult to do and it's still another 200, 250 feet of a tunnel shot rising gently uphill as you get to the basket. So, so hard to set yourself up in good position for three or more shots. Yeah, I would say this is the hardest fair disc golf hole that we play there's some silly ones that are maybe that might score harder or things like that but this is a good this is a good disc golf hole this is hard slow drifting shot from Cole doesn't quite get full flight it was a touch low and this nicely done by Garrett although it does fight back through the left side. Uh, if he's looking over top of the short tee pad, he's gonna be in great shape. Yeah, that left side 
Seems like it plays well off of the tee for you to get some more distance, but then you do have all those trees to deal with, whether you have a gap or not. Simon, one of the rare shots we see get into position to try to attack and get up the hill on that second shot. Hamas punches through the first gap and then drifts to the right. And even an improvement on what Simon had done. I'm excited to watch those shots. We don't get to see players go for that second shot too often. Cole, this needs to continue drifting to the right. Oh, and a nice touch off of that tree. I think it was going to get the drift if it didn't hit the tree, but tree definitely put it in its right place. And Garrett playing a flip up. Bottom of the hill is really good. And even being a, a touch back from that means you're not throwing straight up. Yeah, being a touch back actually helps you get a little bit farther up to the top of that hill. And Simon, he's still probably 400 plus. Gonna try to get there. Oh yeah, not quite to the top, but he is far enough up that he can stand still and see the basket. Hamas to the forehand. Draws it over, gonna find the stability. Yeah. And wow, that's big time. This, so far through eight shots, this is the best I've seen this hole get played. Agreed. By At least by an entire card. Yeah, everybody across the creek in two, and two players almost crested the hill. And Cole just absolutely piping this shot. That's not normal. No, it attacks the gap. Even from from that good position, a lot of players would be throwing mid-range to the top of the hill. Yeah, he's got himself inside circle, too. Here you go, mid-range to the top of the hill. He's just trying to land in this gap. Completely rational play from Garrett. Man, that was a great shot from Cole. Let's see what Simon can do. I'm surprised he's going with any type of run up here. He's got the power to stand still. Yeah, that's kind of what happens. Difficult to get the footing correct, although he does get a favorable reaction to bump back to the fairway. Jump put approach incoming. And Hamas. At the top of the hill, just a bit off to the right. Has room to flex this. And very well done inside the circle, Nathan. Yeah, he's got a circle one look for birdie. That is a rare opportunity here on hole 12. I know we're not all the way out, but I think I'm going to take my snowman watch away as our card has completely just obliterated this hole compared to the rest of the field, I would say. Yeah, unquestionably. Long birdie look from Simon. He gave it a pretty good bid there. That had more of that floaty pace that I'm used to seeing from Simon. Cole from mid C2. Chance for the bird. Oh, and just a little bit on the floaty side. Ended up left by the time it got there. Adam Hammis trying to card a birdie and bounce back. Wow, and another right side Man. flop out. Very similar to the last hole that he just had the same thing happen. And that would have been just the third birdie. There were only three birdies. Excuse me, there were only two birdies on this hole today. Ricky Wysockley and Nicholas Robertson. Nice work to those folks. Uh, what's it scoring overall, Nathan? Uh... The hardest hole on the course by .49, averaged a 6.15. On the surface, Ledgestone is one of Disc Golf's leading retailers. But look a little closer and you'll find a group of motivated individuals providing the best possible service to the disc golf community. So whether you're building a bag, wanting to support your favorite pro, or looking to add to your disc golf wardrobe, choose Ledgestone. 
moves us into hole 13, another pretty difficult par 4, 653 feet. You've got to get past this tree that the drone is passing right now in order to have an angle to get around and safely carry this little OB pond that you've got right here. Seems simple, but pretty difficult to get. You really need to get 400 feet or so off of the tee. Minimum, minimum. The backhand kind of stand up is ideal. Cole, a lot of height here and a great skip. He's actually going to be looking at the basket. The yeah, cedar you pointed out is our is our reference point for good shot v great shot. That seemed too inside to me, but Cole just has so much speed. He just traveled around that corner. A similar line here from Garrett, and he's going to catch a little inside line. Does get good progress, but that's decision time, whether you want to be ambitious with the turnover shot or just lay up for par. Simon, I like this shape. Pushing the back wall, should get to edge. Oh yeah. And yeah, he's out there with Cole. Yeah, I think that's the intended shape right there. Maybe a little bit fast on the finish, but there's not really much. I'm getting really picky with that one. Yeah, as soon as Nathan learns that 450 righty backhand, he's gonna be a, a sight to see. <laughs> Ham is going to boost off to the left. Man, I thought I threw such a good lefty backhand on this hole today, and I was like 50 feet short of where you need to be at. <laughs> I was so disappointed. Adam Hammis uh, going to be disappointed in this for sure, as he is now throwing three with no opportunity to save a par. At best, he's going to get bogey here. Needs this to be a great shot. And that's pretty credibly done. He should be able to throw a turnover or one of his forehands into the green. It happens really quickly on this middle of the back stretch, Nathan. Yes, indeed. As you see, Garrett trying to play smart there. D did drift a little bit too far left, but should be close enough. He'll be able to get up and down. Stand still from 250 for Cole. And perfectly matches the hill. Count it. He's gonna have himself another birdie. Yeah, I think you can you can safely book that as a three. Simon, a little more Anheuser, I expect. This is an interesting green in that you're carrying OB, so you've really gotta make sure you put enough on it. But if you get too much height, then the the mound that this sits on, you're gonna be long circle's edge very quickly if you don't hit this hill. So definitely paramount to be able to look at it and see all of it. If you're trying to throw to it blind, much more difficult. Oh, and Garrett making the critical mistake. Has to play from the short side of the pond. Yeah, and this is going to bring in double. So stupid. Yeah, just a, a silly mistake there. You know, definitely had the power in the room to be able to get that shot on it. Just kind of fluffed it over the pond. Yeah, I, I like to think that if he was playing for birdie, he would have thrown it long. He would have made the correct mistake. Instead, I think he tried to be too cute and fine to get the par. And Hamas is able to scramble for that bogey, which is the best he could have done after those three shots. And Cole Radalin fixing to join Simon Lazat on this birdie club on hole 13. Pretty rare, I imagine. Yeah, moves himself to five under. It is the fourth most difficult hole on the day, but did get a fair amount of birdies. 14, a par 5, 893 feet, about 425 to the ideal landing zone as we break gently left and then more severely left. From that spot, it is a true fairway with a mess of scattered trees everywhere. And then a pretty flat green. There is some out of bounds to the right side in the second half of the hole. And uh, 
Just absolute jungle to the left. And they've really cleaned up the first part of this tee shot. It makes it to where you can, it's, it's reasonable to reach this corner. And the years past, oh my goodness. Or overthrow the corner. <laughs> Whatever. It's, in years past, it's been really difficult to actually reach this corner, let alone throw past it like Cole just did. Uh, so I really like that, that they've cleaned this up. Allows you to possibly give yourself a chance to throw down that tunnel. Oh, boy. That's a shank. I agree, Simon. That's uh, not one we're used to seeing from you. too much hyzer here. This is going to track to the left side and short of the corner. So he's going to have to be a little creative to to get something out of his second shot. Oh, dude, snap it. Yeah, Garrett's going to follow. I think, yeah. you could, I think the stress of the bogey and double on the previous hole were yep. getting to them a little bit. Ooh. Simon creative just to get 120. Yeah, kind of funny angle on out of his hand there. Almost looked like going for roller, but couldn't get any speed on it, so came back out. Garrett able to get up to kind of that landing zone. And here's here's our first Simon line of the day. Aren't any trees up there. Kind of taking it out over the out of bounds. Watch out, catch cam. and does dunk it back in. Hamas trying to throw a panning forehand. And reasonably well done. He's gonna have an Anheuser look down the gut for his third. Care with the Heiser flip. Great movement on this. Oh yeah, great control, third shot. Great scramble. That's going to give him a very good opportunity to get up and down for his birdie. There are some late kind of scattered trees close to the basket uh, that make even those short shots a little bit nervy. And a pretty big second from Cole Radalin. Now backwards hat Hamas. I said Anheuser. He also has the forehand, but has overturned it. He'll boost to the right. And inbounds is the nicest thing I could say about Simon's third shot. As he's got to once again pitch and get a little bit. So needs this. He's pretty far out here and needs this to get up and down for bogey. Yeah, Simon? and looks to have executed pretty nicely. Catches a tree and kind of rolls back to the point of origin there. He'll be right around circle's edge looking for that bogey putt. And the framing kind of tells the story here that he was going up and around and well inside the circle for Adam Hammes. Yeah, there you see why. Get a little bit of open space. These guys like those hyzers. This is Cole's third. Fire. You're fire. You're fire. Hits the gap nicely and slow down. It does get Thank you. pretty hairy in a hurry behind the basket. Yeah, a bit too much pace there, but he is going to be in circle one looking for a birdie. And a great scramble there from Garrett. Going to be inside, just outside the bullseye, looking for his par. And a wild bogey for Simon. Emotionally, that feels like a birdie, though, from the crazy places he started. And there is that straddle putt from Cole. That would go back to back now. Six under par and moved himself. 
into a tie for first. Starting to distance himself from the rest of the card now. Adam and Garrett both going to card the par. Moves us into hole 15. Beautiful par 4. This grassy green fairway headed down this tunnel shot of the the trees kind of leaning in. You've got a slight slope from right to left. OB lining the entire left side as well. You're going to see four hands off of the tee or some backhand mid ranges to just kind of slowly drift off to the right the tire flight. Maybe some fairways also. Yeah, this gives you a lot of opportunity to, to be you. Attack as much as you'd like to. Cole's going to be smooth yeah. with the mid-range. Let it float out to the right side. Yes. And that is in great position. About 300 feet to the bucket. Yeah, there's a little divot down at the bottom where it starts to go back uphill, which is about 340 feet off of the tee. And he's carried that. Put you in that prime position. With the forehand, this is liable to tail up the hill and create a weirder angle for the second shot. However, it is very safe playing away from the out of bounds left side. Everson with the fairway driver. And I don't like it. No, it never quite tracked right. <clears throat> Yeah, and it is going to find that OB on the left side. Not quite past that little divot either, so he's going to have some angles. He's going to have more than one angle to get to that pin. Going to have to throw a forehand flex, most likely. Simon goes with that forehand and stays more towards the center of the fairway. Still going to have maybe a bit of a tree to deal with, but should be in good position. Mm. And more trouble for Garrett. Yeah, it's going to be tough to get up and down from where he's at over on the right side as well. Simon able to go with the backhand here. Anheuser looking for a late flex, back to flat, and gets to about circle's edge. Nicely done. Sometimes the trees and alleys don't line up ideally if you're on this right side so ham is to the forehand try to throw it low with a lot of angle and get the skip late oh yeah and he does so nicely uh, you don't always end up with a clean lane like that over there um, great shot there from Adam he's gonna have himself a birdie and Cole with Pretty much a perfect drive. Leaves this out just a little bit left, but still going to be right around circle one's edge. And funny angle incoming for Garrett. This is going to fade off to the left as it pans. Oh boy. Oh man, we're looking at seven right here yeah this is a putt for six yeah tough hole here for Garrett had a pretty good round going up till these last few holes as Simon Lazat able to just hang on that left side for a bounce back birdie let's take a look at that one again I'm gonna watch his eyes here oh Ooh. he kind of willed that in Spit through the chains late and balanced on the back of the rim. Nice birdie there for Simon Cole to do the same. Gobble, gobble. 5 3 4 3 is not what you see on holes 12 through 15. No. 13, 
fourth hardest hole, 14 second hardest hole. And Ham is also gonna gonna birdie. Ben Wolf, by the way, guys, able to throw a thumber in here on hole 15 for the Eagle. How far? That's a good question. Okay. I just had the the throw sh the type. Didn't have the okay. distance on that one. But it was a skip. Uh, it did skip in from about 20 feet short. Nice shot, Ben Wolf. Hole 16, 330 feet, throwing off a cliff, downhill, over the creek, through the river, or over the river, through the woods, and grandmother's house perched up on this little peninsula. Yeah, very fun tee shot here. This is kind of, I want to say one of the holes you want to empty your bag on, but you probably lose half of it if you emptied your bag on this one. Yeah, they're all going to end up left in the creek somewhere. <laughs> Cole Radalin not being too tempted by the ace, able to hang on in circle one. Hamas again to the forehand. Pretty high. And the, oh, what a great touch. What a great touch indeed. Gonna have a little whisker tickler there, right there in the bullseye. Nice back-to-back -back birdies for him. Should put him back to even par. And Simon, the slow drifting backhand. This is online all day. Another whisker tickler. Yeah, just a beautiful shot. You can really see he used his wrist to snap that disc down there. Very well controlled. Garrett, if this will catch up with some hyzer late or a little bush touch. Oh. Just a bit low and he's got a, he's got fired back there pretty far. Once he hit those logs right there, bounce back a good 30, 40 feet. And more green on the scorecard for Cole. Back to back to back to back. Still has himself in a tie for the lead. Eight under par, pushing that course record nine under. I believe that was set by Calvin Heimberg last year. And Garrett gonna take the par as Simon The very short cut in to get himself to 13 under, tied for fifth this time. Yeah, brings us into another par three. 320 feet. Feels like it could be the shortest on the course out here. Yeah, not quite, but playing downhill. Two gap options here. You can throw this backhand. down the left side as Cole is going to with the slight drift to the right. Oh, and he's executed this nicely. Is coming in a bit hot. Oh, and it's gonna catch the very end of that wall, keeping him in bounds. You've got a little bit of a flex shot down this right side as well. It's gonna drift away from that OB. One time. This looks great. Oh man, crosses right in front of it, catches the edge of that bridge. He's gonna be right on the bullseye, looking for a turkey of his own. Yes, Simon. Simon, good drift. That's uh, three bullseyes in a row for Simon. They're back to back at least. Back to back, he had it at the big putt on 15. Yeah, our, our card making pretty short work of 
16 and 17. Let's get Garrett back on track here. And this looks great. Yeah, late drift. Beautiful shot there from Garrett. Just slow drifting that entire flight. Oh, and Cole. He had a awkward stance earlier in the round where he pulled it off to the right as well. Uh, gonna have a bit of a comeback for his par now as he rolled down that hill. Garrett does get himself back on track a bit there. Nice birdie. Good fun, Garrett. And calm, cool, collected, Cole with Allen. And nice par save. Simon sitting in the bullseye. This birdie's going to move him to five under now. And into a tie for fourth. Adam Hammis, first time under par in quite a while with this turkey he just gobbled up. And we're going to close it out on hole 18. 703 feet. And stop me if you've heard this before. Very difficult to get in exactly the right landing zone off the tee. Then the fairway is going to take a pretty severe turn to the right and go uphill. Basket relatively safe. It's just so hard to string together two shots that match the line and shape. Yeah, even when you get to the landing zone on this hole, it's the slope that you have to deal with going up to control the angle of your second shot. It's not really your footing, but the angle control on your second shot is just very difficult to hit. This counterclockwise spin, a pretty good way to make it happen. Matches the shape and then tries to climb back up the hill. Adam may have overthrown the landing zone by a touch. I think this shot's a bit more difficult to get into the correct landing zone. Simon pulls this out pretty wide right. I think you get to the right landing zone if you go through everything on the right. <laughs> Yeah, because uh, a lot of the big miss is left. It's very difficult to get your disc to stand up and stay right. Uh, skips off too far left a lot of the time with this backhand shot. Garrett going to test the back wall. And there's, there's the coin flip. Simon gets through. Garrett doesn't. So he may be able to find the narrow cleared alley up the right side. Very narrow. And Cole, good swing here. Has the stand up. And branches didn't help or hurt, I don't think. Yeah, should be in a pretty good spot there. I think he's going to be in the best position of the group. And here's that very narrow fairway that we were talking about. And he's able to traverse his way up there pretty well. Yeah, I think that's about all you can ask for from that position. Get up on the flat. So Cole, one more opportunity to get to nine under par and tie that course record. He's in a good spot, and this looks like a good shot. Yeah, it's wow. drifting to the right. Good oh, it's incredible. Contact. Wow. What a round from Cole. Yeah, early bogey on the third or the fourth. And just a birdie opportunity after birdie opportunity after that. And he has capitalized on most of them. Yeah, I don't want to play the what-if game too much, but he also missed a few very makeable putts in there. Simon with an okay shot, tracks off to the left. And wow. Hamas with the That's steep Anheuser flex with the that. forehand. Yeah. That was a pretty sweet shot. He had to go through an early Y tree, it looked like there may have caught a late tree to keep him from a good putt but should be inside circle two and garrett should be in position for his par battled quite a bit on the back nine but going to close it out pretty well with a birdie and par and simon lazat to finish with four birdies in a row six under par on the round let's take a look at that again 55 60 feet here what a hero. And that's how he is going to get onto the lead card for round three again at Northwood. Oh, I love the reactions in the background of the crowd right there. What a shot. 
Adam Hammes also trying to get the last four holes here. Oh, and just a bit low. Knew it out of his hand, though. Third most difficult hole on the course, and Cole Riddallen going to finish it with a birdie. Nine under par. Incredible round. So fun to watch. Absolutely. Uh, just striping fairways all over the place. One of just 11 birdies on the 18th today. So again, a very well-played, challenging hole by our entire card. Please make sure you like, share, subscribe. Do all those things so that Gatekeeper continu can continue to cover the chase card at these DGPT Elite events. Clean back nine from Cole Riddallen. Simon Lazat, five birdies in the last six holes, both to make a push for that lead card tomorrow. But we're going to have Andrew Marway, Chris Dickerson, Casey White. And I missed the fourth name. I, I did too. So it's going to be a surprise to us, I guess. Oh, Ricky Wysocki. And Another. Ricky Wysocki Great. also Welcome making back. a good push. <laughs> Thank you guys for joining us out here for Northwood Black. We will see round two of Northwood Black for round three of Ledgestone tomorrow. For Andrew Fish, I'm Nathan Queen, and we'll see you guys out there.